Well, we've got so many Pro 2 teams out here with five guys, six guys, some even have 10 guys. This squad, just two men working on this truck, servicing it. What is your name, sir? My name is Eric Jacobus. From? J.E. Racing. Excellent. Where are you from? Uh, Riverside, local. So you're close to home. That's that's great. But I want to know, how in the world are you able to do this with just you and your good buddy Ryan here? We're, you know, sometimes we don't know. We're just doing it. We're uh, trying to run with the big guys and, and trying to keep up. How would you explain to somebody just how difficult it is to keep up with the modern technology and the cost? It's, it's insane. Uh, some of these teams are spending half a million dollars and we are on a tight budget and we do it in our garage. So we're building the trucks in our garage and, and making every part that we can and then uh, come out to the races and we bang our head in the ground and try to keep up. There it is. Now tell me a little bit about your truck. I know there's brand new state-of-the-art trucks and you said this one's got a little bit of history, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, this is an old Tony, Tony Vanelli truck built in 97. And it ran in core. It ran in the East Coast for a while. Uh, Todd LaDuke ran it for a little bit. And then uh, I got it from a trade deal and uh, back half it, front half it, kind of get some weight off of it. And but we're making it happen. So you were able to back half and front half it all by yourself? Oh, yeah. Do you have a lot of chassis fabrication experience? I, uh, I used to do desert for 14 years, and oh, wow. I was racing class one cars, and I kind of wanted to get in a short course because I wanted to make it more of a family atmosphere for my kids to come out, and they can see actually us racing, not just in the desert walking us go by. So I kind of wanted to do it so um, have more family togetherness, and they can actually see it. Like, they watch it on TV all tonight. They watched every incident, everything I messed up, and it was awesome to see, uh, hey, that's my dad out there doing this, and it's actually on you know, Mad TV. That's pretty cool when you get the exposure and they can watch it live and yep. cheer you on, especially since we're not allowed to have fans here right now. No, no, so. not at all. So they're watching on TV and all the neighbors are over, and, and it's like party at my house watching what's going on out here. Now, what's Ryan doing over here? I see he's working on a King Shock. Yeah, he's gonna rebuild the shock. We're gonna change the oil, change a little bit of valving. We're, uh, we're kind of hit bottom and out a lot right now, so we're gonna add some more valving to it. And we're uh, running out of room on the bypasses, so we have to put a little more wear out in the shock. Ryan, what's your background that you're able to do all this? Oh yeah, so I, I did the desert racing for a while too. I raced a uh, class 1450, kind of the, the poor man's racing of uh, trucks and whatnot. And uh, then I met this guy, he's one of my uh, neighbors, good neighbor. Um, awesome guy saw him building a class one car in his garage and I said I gotta know this guy and so I went over there in my golf cart and started working with him kind of seeing what he's building um, did the desert racing as well with him and then uh, he switched over to short course I um, mean I, I made the same jump because family atmosphere we can be here but not in the desert where it's two hours to get out there here is short course the fans are right there the race is right there they can see everything so it's pretty awesome and so yeah so I never looked back What's your last name, Ryan? Uh, my last name is Venegas, Ryan Venegas. Sounds familiar, okay. I've been following desert racing for a long time. You guys have any desire to go back to desert, despite what he just said? I know that it's not quite as spectator friendly, but we're you here. In... One day, yeah. I mean, we still have, I still have my class one car, but short course is, is like racing a desert race all in 15 minutes. So it's just right now, right now. And so, uh, not yet, maybe later, maybe, couple years five six years maybe go back in the desert a little bit but love this world course right now what's your all-time best finish in the lucas series uh fifth place wow that was great in reno that was in year. reno last year yep that was a good run what would it mean to you if you guys could end up on the podium here one of these days you know what my goal right now is not even podium my goal is to beat myself and to have my best races that i can have because compared to racing with teams like this now it's hard and if I ever get on a podium, it, it, it's, it's a thrill, but that's not my goal. My goal is to beat myself. All right, Eric, we're taking a look at your power plant. If you build yourself, the good news is no motor work necessary tonight, right? No work, motor work, no tranny work. We're going to keep it like it is. Basically, we're just bottoming out really hard. We want to get the shock kind of dialed in and go to qualify and see how we do. Okay. How, you know, how many years does it take to develop that seat of the pants feel where you can tell what the shock is doing? Uh, many years. I mean, I ran 14 years in desert. I ran dirt bikes when I was a kid, raced stadium supercross, all that stuff. And you can feel it. When someone's not working right, you can actually feel it in your shorts. I can see that. Well, hopefully this remedies it. And by day, you're a diesel mechanic? Diesel mechanic. You, you gotta tell me about that. Uh, actually, we service and maintain ref refrigerated units for multiple different companies around Southern California.
also want to talk a little bit about JE Racing. What is JE Racing? JE Racing is Jacobus Engineering, because I engineer and make a lot of my own stuff. So I used to do desert cars, and that's where it really came from, is JE, Jacobus Engineering. And uh, built class one cars, class 10 cars, class five cars, built a lot of race cars. And that's kind of where it came from. In 08, when the economy crashed, I had to close that up and actually go to work. I mean, go to work, you know, physically work doing something different. Sure. When the economy came back a little bit, still doing diesel mechanic, and I decided to start getting back into racing, what I love to do. And that's kind of where JE Racing came back. What are some of the components that you sell? Uh, we sell hubs, we sell body washers, we sell uh, hub caps, uh, small stuff, shock, a couple shock parts. Nothing crazy right now, but we're doing small products. But we build our own in-house CNC machines. And if somebody wants to get a hold of you or check out your inventory, what's the best way? I have to get? a website. It's what? called JE Racing Products. Beautiful man. Yep. Can't wait to see it. And we'll be we'll be rooting for the underdogs over here. Not a team of ten, just two. That would be pretty awesome if you guys could find your way atop the podium. So we wish you all the best. How many races do you think you'll hit this year? Uh, I'm gonna try to hit them all. We're gonna go all over. So uh, as many as Lucas has. Well, thanks a lot for the time and good luck to you this season. Uh, thank you. It's truly amazing what they're able to do with two guys. Huh? Here's a look at Brian Deegan's heavily funded team. He has a vast crew. He has a lot of resources over there and a lot of very smart men. But Jacobus, able to somehow do it with two people. And yes, that includes the driver. Very, very impressive. Takes a lot of work. So as you can see guys, crews of all different sizes. We've got some teams that are heavily funded that have a lot of guys, and we've got some teams doing it with just two individuals, all for the love. It's amazing what Eric and team can do. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe, share, comment. There will be much more coming if you love off-road racing. This is your spot.